Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. We're here the Who in the Tour YouTube channel. We are so thankful you guys could join us today on a first day, the day after our Shabbat rest. Hope you guys all had a great rest today, and today we're going over number six. Yeah, number six. How you guys doing? Good. Good. All right, so Jade, you got a little too much sleep yesterday. I think so. And you couldn't sleep last night? It was a long night. Long night. Anyone hungry here? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Anyone looking like the Pharisees yet? No. Nope. What, what are you guys doing? Uh, we're fasting. Why are you fasting? I don't know. You don't know? I let him know why we're fasting. Do you know, why are you fasting, Kate? Uh, I guess spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. That's that's a good answer on the Yahoo and the Torah channel. Uh, why are you fasting? Um, we're all going to together. Uh, yeah, everyone's. Mis I, I misery just, loves company. Misery loves company. That is very true. Uh, that's true with everything. Yeah, so uh, why is that? Why does misery love company? I don't know. When someone suffers, everyone likes to see everyone else suffer around them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think everyone wants to suffer, but it's, it's a lot easier to suffer with others suffering. But, uh, yeah, they're actually fasting. I'm doing a little fast today, and um, it's actually not even spiritual. It's no nothing. It might get spiritual here in a while, but it's, start, <laughs> it's starting off for some health stuff and for our, uh, my high blood pressure. I'm seeing if uh, the fasting is going to help with my high blood pressure. I've been, I've been really, really good. I got the diabetes fixed, but uh, for the most part. But now I am trying, and I've been working very hard, trying to get my blood pressure down, and it doesn't seem to go down very quick. And it simply seems like I can have some negative thoughts, and I can drive that sucker to, to like, where, you know, the, the doctors would all be stunned if they saw me, and they start doing it. So um, I'm doing everything possible to avoid any kind of big pharma stuff, and so we are, I've been drinking beet juice for a while, and uh, just like literally, wife will pick up beets and grind them into pieces, and uh, you know, I will, will drink that concoction, and it doesn't seem to be working, and uh, Doc, Doc Barkley, uh, fear monger, told me to take a bunch of uh, vitamins, I'm taking those vitamins, nothing seems to be working there either, so we are seeing where it is going, I don't know, maybe I am... Uh, I'm just a ticking time bomb, and that is that is okay because everything is in the hand of Yah, and I value and I thank Him for every moment that I've been alive. And when it's my time to go, it is my time to go. As with all of us, from dust to dust we came, and dust to dust we will go. All right, gentlemen, how are you guys? Anything else? Um, not no. really. Not real spunky this morning. No, all right. Not much. Not much. All right. Well, let's get into this then, and let's see where we're gonna go. I'm gonna break out my handy dandy split screen. Bam. I've lost my drum roll, people. It's over. Oh, I know that every time. Yeah, I gotta get used to the uh, drum roll. You know, it's just kind of fun, but that's all right. All right, number six. Numbers six. And this is called the Nazarite. So we were wondering where they, the Nazarenes came into, and it just came one chapter later. So here, let's, let's see what it is. And I, this, is, this is interesting. Listen up on this gentleman. Um, because we need to find out if there are commands here. And I would, I would probably say, I just skimmed this this morning, I would probably say there are commands. Um, it doesn't command you to be a Nazarite, but if you decide you want to set your par yourself apart for Elohim, then this is the way to do it. So, and Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to a vow, a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto Yahuwah, he shall separate himself or herself from wine and strong drink and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes nor eat moist grapes or dried. All right. So right out of the gate, what do we got? So basically we have someone that wants to separate themselves. They want to basically make themselves, I guess, closer to Yah, more of like a chosen person of Yah or something to that degree, whatever a Nazarite is. But if they do that, they're not allowed to uh, drink grapes or vinegar. I think that's more like wine, I think, right? Um, it says it says in the NIV, it says in the King, is there a vinegar or, or of strong drink? I don't know if that is, uh, I don't know exactly what vinegar so of strong drink wine is. wine or vinegar or grapes or raisins. I would say no alcohol whatsoever and nothing um, from that. But it's interesting, you can have a woman or a man be a Nazarene. And how do they say it here? It's uh, na Nazir. Nazir. That's how they, they say that. Mine right. says no drink, no vinegar of wine. No vinegar of wine. So I guess they, I guess wine makes vinegar or something. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't taste like vinegar to me, but I don't know. Um, four. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. 
Okay, what did you guys say? Kernels to the Hustons and the King. He does not eat whatever from the grapevine from seed to skin. So I would say this, the skin of the grape, they're calling the husks, is, is yeah, my I guess. Yeah, I assume so, because like on the outside of a corn, is called a husk, so I would assume that's close to it. Right. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which he separates himself unto Yahuwah. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separates himself unto Yahuwah, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother, for his brother or for his sister when they die because uh, the consecration of his Elohim is upon his head. So this is um, this is something that's kind of important. So this is, um, I mean, this is, uh, I guess you're not a priest, but you are set apart. You're setting yourself up to be holy unto Yah, which, you know, that, that sounds like a, a, quite the honor. It's something we've, we've never done, and, uh, you know, it's probably something we should probably do. Uh, I can't imagine what us with really long hair would look like. You guys would look like curly Mo and uh, Larry or something. I actually, Eli would probably look like Larry. Or maybe it would be me. I don't know. One of them, Curly, I don't think had hair. Or, no, one was bald. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you guys have super curly hair when it goes out, so you guys would be Curly Sue's, Curly Dudes. Hmm. Uh, sorry. All right. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he has defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. Okay. So that's very clear what we have. So I mean, basically he messed up. Someone died next to him. Yeah, someone died. Yeah, he woke up and his wife is dead or something. Okay. And on the eighth day, he shall bring two turtles. Uh-oh. Turtle doves. Yep, turtle doves. Dang it. Dr. Pigeon, what's going on, buddy? KJV like, says that, too. It says that in the king? Ah, the king. What are these doing? All right. Well, you don't bring two turtles. <laughs> no sacrifice turtles, guys. Yes, turtle doves. Already in danger as it is. Yes. Or two young pigeons to the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for an ascending smoke offering and make atonement for him. For that he sinned by the dead and shall hollow his head that same day. And he shall consecrate unto Yahuwah the days of his separation and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost because his separation was defiled. So that's very interesting that it says that the days before were lost on the separation. It's like it didn't count or something is, is what I think that reads by. What did you guys say? It says that because of the, his separation was defiled, but the former days are not counted. Yeah, so I guess uh, if you become unclean in this, this way, I think you need to voluntarily end your separation with Yah and do it the right way because, uh, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. And I guess the longer you're separated by Yah, I guess, I guess the bottom line is you're, if you're, the longer you're separated and doing his stuff, then, the I don't know, more blessings come your way or I, I don't know. 13, and this is the Torah of the Nazi. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and he shall offer his offering unto Yahuwah, one lamb of the first year without blemish for an ascending smoke offering, and one ewe of the first year without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for a peace offering. All right, so there's three things that you gotta, you got to kill here. Um, and it's coming out of this, and so it's like, um, I don't know. I don't know how long people actually dedicate themselves they dedicate them for life well, i don't know how do you how do you know when your time is up for being as right i don't know because you probably become unclean or something but i don't know i i do not know all right and a basket of matzah cakes of fine flour mingled with oil and wafers of matzah anointed with oil and their oblation and their drink offerings and the priest shall bring them before yahuwah and shall offer his sin offering and his ascending smoke offering and he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto yahuwah with the basket of matzah, the priest shall offer also his oblation and his drink offering. Hold on, how do you say this again? Nazir. And the Nazir shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and shall take the hair of the head of his separation and put it in the fire, which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. So something about the hair, you know, something about having long hair. And I mean, if, if that, you know, we, we know the story of Samson and, you know, his entire strength. and the strength came from his hair. Which is strength came from his hair. Maybe we're a bunch of beta males because we're not, we're not uh, growing our hair out. Maybe, maybe we could, like, lift, like, huge stones and, like, be able to do things we couldn't do. Or maybe the Nazarite, maybe that's what we need for farming, guys. Maybe we should dedicate everybody here and become super strong. 
Yeah. We literally take stuff all around us, so that's just, I don't know if that's going to work. Always some, oh, something. Yeah, like some, shit, somebody's going to be, Eli's going to have to be stuck in his room or something, because there's, there's dead things everywhere. We're, we're going to be doomed in the first day. All right. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder of the ram, and one matzah cake out of the basket, and one matzah wafer, and shall put them upon the hands of the nazir, after the hair of his separation is shaven. Okay? And the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. This is holy for the priest, with the wave breast and the heave, and heave shoulder, and after that the nazir may drink wine. This is the Torah of the nazir, who has vowed and his offering unto Yahuwah, for his separation, besides that, that his hand shall get according to the vow which he vowed. So he must do after the Torah of his separation. Okay. And we're almost done here. I think this last part is actually like the, uh, like some bread and butter here, or if we're looking for the, uh, the juice, this is it. Um, and Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe saying, speak unto El Aaron and unto his son saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Yashrael, saying unto them. And I guess I'll say this to everybody, right? When we read this blessing, let's this blessing be upon everybody. Everybody at this table, everybody that's listening to this. Um, this is this is a, an amazing blessing. Let's begin. Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Yashrael, and I will bless them. All right, so first and foremost, do we have any commandments here? Um, I guess if we want to separate ourselves, we would put maybe all the, the Torah of the maybe the law of the Nazarite. If you yeah, become a Nazarite, Torah of the Naz Nazim, um, I think is what this would be. So this would be the next commandment down. So if you want, there's no commandment to be a Nazarene or to Nazarite. Or it's, it Nazarite. was a voluntary thing. If you wanted to set yourself apart to Yah, this is what you do. Right, and this is how you end it, and this is how you end it prematurely. Uh, Nicole's giving me a scalp. What's going so on? So it is a commandment? It's not a commandment. You don't need to be it. But if there is, if you decide you're going to set your part, there is commandments for how we, uh, what we should do. So I don't think it would go on our commandment list. Um, you don't think? Why not? Because it's not a commandment. It's not a commandment unless you do it. And if you do it and you don't do it right, then you're not going to be doing it right, is my thoughts. Anyone? I, I think it should be. I think you should add it if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to do it, this is what you should do. Yeah, it, this is definitely. This is not a. This is not a command. You must be. You must set yourself apart. I think this would be an honor thing, right? Is anyone see? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, who who would who would not want to be like uh, the astute? Uh, student of Yah, you know, if you're setting yourself apart, I mean, if you're setting yourself apart, I'm sure you're probably going to be in prayer a lot more. You're probably going to be, um, uh, you know, knowing, you know, you're aware of the situation and aware of it. I mean, we touch dead stuff all the time. Um, we would definitely, I mean, we couldn't even make it out to feed time probably without a dead bug or something. Yeah. A dead bug. I mean, even how would that work? I mean, what happens if it, you, you touch a fly car? These dudes were like quarantined off and like plastic wrap or something, walking walk around in hazmat suits or something. I don't know how they were doing this. <laughs> Quarantine. No. Um, I don't know. So anyway, I do believe this would be a commandment if you so chose to be a, to set yourself apart. We need to probably put this in there and, you know, we'll explain this as we go through the commandments. That is not a commandment to set yourself apart, but it would be an honor and it would be something that we would probably, um, probably want to attempt or want to try. And if you do want to do it, here's the commands on how to do it. Yeah, if you want to do it, there's your commands on how to do it. So, Nicole, are you with us? Can I get... You still got a scowl on your face or no? It wasn't a scowl. It wasn't a scowl. It was one of those, like... It was, it was a... A question scowl. It was a question. It wasn't a scowl. All right, it wasn't a scowl. It was just a... Uh, it was a froward brow. All right. Okay, so let's um uh, let's wrap this up. Anyone have anything else? It is a it is first day. First day is the day we should begin our work. Not but everybody's, rest. everybody's getting up and going to church right now. Well, that's a problem, but my mother is going up. Your grandmother is getting up, and she's been going to that Baptist church for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And she is a good Christian, and um, she eats her pork, and she does um, she does evil stuff in the eyes of Yah. And even though we've talked to her about it, um, unless Yah is willing to open your eyes, there is absolutely nothing you can do. So we are to her, we are just some Jews or something of the sort. And her pastor has told us that, and. Uh, you know, she goes out and gets advice from the guy who's not a priest, who's not a, and I guess I'm not a priest either, but I mean, I have read the Torah probably more than her pastor has. 
Um, and it is something that is for all generations, something we need to cherish. It is something we need to love. It is something we need to embrace. It is something we need to put on as a coat of armor every single day. And when we don't have this, we should feel naked. We should feel exposed. We should feel vulnerable because we do not have the protection of Yah. And when we have the protection of Yah, the devils and demons can only do so much. So um, I think it's important that we do this. All right, gentlemen. Right. Anything else? That's good. All right. Shalom, everyone. All have right. Have a good day. All right, guys. Shalom. Much love. Shalom. Yeah, much love to everybody out there. We're out.